listening to White The Truck. Are you ready to truck it? I'm Dooner here with Michael Vincent, the dude. Hey, welcome to Sfoos, everybody. It's uh, never an uneventful time here in Chattanooga. No, it isn't. (laughs) (laughs) Last night at like 9.30, a transformer exploded, right? Because it was 262 degrees here in Chattanooga. Check a look at this. Take a look at this from Brainerd. Yeah, no, we're not lying. 262 262 degrees degrees here in Chattanooga. Beautiful. That's not even Celsius. That's Fahrenheit. How did you survive yesterday? (laughs) Your pool was boiling. I jumped into the pool, and I had to jump right back out. It was too hot. But then it caused this right down the street. Show this video, guys. So... (laughs) Uh, one of our video guys, uh, Darren Case, one of our animators, he was, uh, he, this was right by his apartment, and I guess it's the Ben and Jerry's building, and they've restored power all around Chattanooga, but as you can see there, up from the grates in the ground, this transformer is on yeah, fire, and knocked out that. power here at HQ, fiber and everything. Fortunately, uh, thank you EBP for getting that back together. Uh, here it's just Ben and Jerry's right now that, uh, that doesn't have it. It's unbelievable, man. I mean, the only thing hotter out there right now is our lineup of guests today. Oh, yeah, we're going to get into it today with Project 44 CEO and founder Jet McCandless. We got Cloud Truck CEO and founder Tobina Arabu. We got uh, Dave Kessler, Vice President, Expedited Fleet and Operations at ArcVest. And Jake Gustafson, Executive Vice President of Brokerage Operations at Echo. Now, we're talking, we're going to focus a little bit on small yeah. fleets, small carriers. And one of the reasons we are is they are getting brutalized in this market right now. Yeah. As Craig Fuller tweeted yesterday, spot rates are trending towards a new cycle low. They've dropped over a third <sighs> since mid-January when they were 301 a mile to $1.95. It hasn't broken $1.91 a mile yet during this low, and uh, he's not expecting it to happen anytime soon. And with tender rejects at like 8.3%, uh, it's hard to see those spot rates getting a lot of pressure on them. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. I'd like to see them go back up, but they certainly are not. Man. Yeah, There's they're the most in harm's way. So this couldn't happen any more oppression time. And we have actually some of the comments. James Henderson, he says, I love my 1991 Peterbilt. It runs better than the newer tractors I have in my fleet. I will never get rid of that tractor. Wow, a lot of pride. A lot of pride in that. There you go. How about we get over to uh, Jay Gustafson over with Echo. He's executive vice president of brokerage operations over there. And he wants to talk about how partnering with a 3PL can help enable growth for operators, owner operators, especially in a tough time like this. Uh, congratulations, by the way, Jay. I hear uh, Descartes' macro point included Echo Global Logistics on their top carrier list for 2022. So, a little cowbell for you. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> thank you very much. And uh, as always, thank you for, for having can me. Can you unmute him, please? We, can we bring uh, Jay's volume up, or is Jay muted himself? I don't think I muted myself. We got Jay on mute here. Can you hear me? All right. Well, Jay, once they're going to get you off mute, just a second here. Uh, we'll get them off guys there in a second. On that. Yeah, things are tough for the small own operators. I just put out the, uh, you know, the wait times are up 8% year to date as well. Oh, absolutely. You know what's you even worse about fuel up 58% us? And, then, and then wait times up 8 Jay, I think we got you now. Can you hear me? We yeah. Do. Okay, right. we can hear you we now. Congratulations to you and the team. I, thank you very much for the, uh, the call out on the macro point, Descartes. Recognition that certainly wouldn't have been possible with the support of our, our carrier partners that are ultimately the one providing us with that connectivity. And so uh, thanks for, for that shout out and uh, for having me on today. As you mentioned, it's an interesting time in the market. And uh, I'm happy to talk a little bit about how 3PLs can help provide owner operators small fleets with a bit more stability when the market's in a little bit of a, a free fall like we're seeing right now. Yeah, go for it. Tell us a little bit about that. What is, why is it so valuable to partner with a good 3PL when the market, especially now when the market's going downwards? So it's like, you know, this is, there's obviously not a, a super objective definition of what the right 3PL is. But as I think about the world we see at Echo and the success we've seen with the owner operator and small fleet community, there's really like three or four things that I think um, put a, a broker in that right that 3PL of choice category. I'd say the first is scale. Um, You never want to go into a store where you can't reliably get what you need. The same thing is true for a a freight broker working with trucking companies. As an owner operator in small fleet, you need to work with the companies that have access to thousands and thousands of shipments a day. That scale gives you the ability to find the freight you need in the short term and the long term. The second and third thing I'll kind of combine is a a combined approach using relationships and technology to meet the needs of the trucking companies that uh, the three PLs support. We really believe at Echo, it's that combined approach that that gives us a leg up upon our competition. We use 
technology where we think it's needed, and we rely on relationships and really understanding a trucking company's business um, in other areas of the operation. The last thing I'll mention that's, I think, ex- incredibly relevant to the small fleets and owner ops is 24-7 coverage that allows a broker to provide immediate resolution when a problem happens. We do a semi-annual carrier survey, We've done it the last seven, eight years. Every time we do it, um, responsiveness and 24-7 coverage come up in the top three items that carriers feel are important when they are selecting a 3PL partner. And so I really believe that com- combination of scale, relationships, tech, and that 24-7 coverage to handle exceptions is what's allowed Echo to grow from uh, grow our owner-operator and small fleet network or, and not grow it just through transactional opportunities. Yeah, We're yeah. Able to the yeah Jay. Jay, that makes a ton of sense. And the owner-operators of small fleets right now, they're going through such a rough time right now. Everything is just topsy-turvy crazy. The global yeah. supply chains are crazy. Talk about the sub- stability they look for and they need and they can get from uh, a 3PL partner like that. Well, I think if you're just playing the spot market, you're just surfing the public load boards, you're going to be uh, exposed to what's going on in the market right now. As rates are plummeting, as brokers are going to these public load boards, you know, you're you're naturally going to find freight. It's probably a little bit less than your ideal rate per mile or, or revenue per day. And I think one of the things that small fleets, owner ops can do to provide themselves with a bit more stability by partnering with a 3PL is offering up their services in more of the form of a, a contractual setup where you're moving specific lanes on a regular basis for a 3PL. Um, we provide that type of opportunity to the companies that we work with through monthly bid events that go out to our preferred carrier network. That lets you say to Echo, I want to move this shipment every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's going to give you stability um, from a pricing standpoint. Those deals are typically set up in either six-month or 12-month arrangements. So when you lock in a lane, you know you're going to get paid the same rate for an extended period of time. The other thing that we do that's pretty unique is we've got a program that's called our Continuous Movement Program. This allows fleets of all sizes to dedicate their capacity to ECHO at guaranteed uh, weekly revenue thresholds. And so you're taking some of the risk out of the market when you commit to a program like that, because no matter what freight that you get booked on, no matter what is going out on within the market in general, you are locking up this guaranteed pricing through our continuous movement program. Yeah, yeah, really important right now, especially uh, I'm hearing from a lot of drivers, are, you know, their fuel carts coming up, a lot of them on net seven terms on those things. And yeah. uh, those bills aren't getting any lower. And uh, as we talked at the beginning of the show, the spot market's not getting any better. If people want to talk to you, Jay, some of the owner operators are listening today, they want to talk to you. And they're like, you know what, I got to bring some tech into my ecosystem and I need some help to weather the storm. Where do we send them to? You can send them to our, uh, our website, echo.com. We'll have a carrier page and they can submit interest in getting connected with one of our representatives. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for having me. Au revoir. Thank you so There's so much. a reason I say that. I understand. Uh, I know why. You our next that. guest might have picked up a little French when he was over in Paris. <laughs> it's Jet McCandless, founder and CEO over at Project 44. I saw you and your team looking wonderful out there uh, over in Europe. Jet, how was the trip? Oh, uh, great. Am I off mute? No, Perfect. you're you're good. You are good. All right. Good, good. I saw Jay, Jay get tripped up a little bit. He's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> it can happen. Was, uh, Europe was a great time. Spent about a month over there, seen all our customers, carriers. Uh, amazing time. You guys have awesome. been... Over in a new office in Paris. You've been growing nonstop. I mean, there's, there's headline after headline. What's been new with Project 44? Just get us up to date real quick. Wow. We've had so much. You know, we have 22 offices around the world now. We just opened an office in Tokyo, Melbourne, uh, Upgraded a huge office in Paris. We signed on uh, about 150 customers last quarter, growing really, really fast. With us, with the business right now, what we're doing is we have a value which is obsessed over the customer. And so we're really just uh, working on some fundamental things in the business, all this rapid growth, uh, make sure the customers are getting the most value. That's a big focus of Project 44 right now. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, hey, Jet, uh, going through this, some, there's so many different things that are happening. China opening up, shutting down. You've got all these different things that are going on. Spot rates dropping. What do the small fleets in European, what do they need to be watching this summer? What are the key indicators they need to be looking at? Yeah, I don't think some of these things won't be a surprise at all. Of course, uh, they've already been feeling the squeeze of the high cost of uh, diesel for some time. As you talked about, the rates uh, uh, really aren't reflecting that. Uh, so it's going to be a pretty painful uh, year uh, for the for the small small carriers out there. And I think what's going to uh, what I'd watch for for them is that the shippers want visibility. Uh, they're requiring that their asset carriers, the brokers, three PLs they go through provide visibility. And uh, that expectation is going to get higher and higher this year. As we're going to this bear market, um, I think the shippers are feeling like uh, they can finally start to uh, require that from the carriers. Yeah, that's and- a which I was going to say, you made a great point there, and I didn't want to move off it so quick because you, you said how the shippers are requiring this data now too, right? They're requiring this visibility. They're requiring this connectivity. And it's easy for an owner operator to go, I don't really feel like I need the tech. I do it old school. You know, I like I like whatever I like. Yeah. Um, but the problem is now you need to find partners, right, Jet? You need to find, you need to be compatible with your partners. That's right. That's right. And I, I have a lot of empathy for the folks who want to do it old school. Uh, and I get that. So we try to make it as easy as possible for the carriers to to interact with us, make sure it doesn't feel like big brother at all. Uh, but the reality is, is that these shippers are under tremendous pressure. They need to optimize their docks, they need to optimize their inventory. They have uh, all types of challenges. And the best way for them to do that is to have a digital experience or that full visibility all the way from the port of origin into their stores. And any time that a carrier is not participating, that shippers digitalization goal, let's say visibility here, that creates an operational exception. When it creates an operational exception, the, the shippers can't, can't accomplish their, their, their goals. So uh, now what we've had in the last two years is that the, uh, the shippers felt like they haven't had uh, leverage on the carriers. And I'm more of a carrot than stick mm-hmm. when it comes to the, 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 the carriers. But I can tell you that a lot of shippers really feel like uh, this year they're going to give a big push. You're going to see it in RFPs. You're going to see it in contracts. Yeah. But they have to be a certain amount of compliance for visibility. Ooh. Yeah. So, Chet, as, as you, you talk about that, and it makes complete perfect sense that you don't want to be outside that norm, especially as a small owner operator. You need to get in there and, and, and make things happen. How, how do those carriers get empowered with that data? How, how, do, they, how do they participate and, and not stick out like that sore thumb? Well, I think, you know, Project 44, we have a number of ways. They can go to project44.com. They can, uh, up in the header, they can click on carriers, and they can see the tools that are available for them based on the size carrier that they are. Uh, the mobile app that's coming out uh, here just in about a week uh, has all types of new, improved experiences for the carriers, which is um, tends to be how the owner-operators, the fleets less than 10 trucks, want to interact with Project 44. Um, and there'd be more value for them. So hopefully what we can do is we're not charging the carriers for any of this technology. We want to make it as, as, as enjoyable experience as possible. We want it to be seamless, low friction, uh, just so that that way their customers, but it's their customer's customer, if they're going through a broker, they're going direct to shipper, they can accomplish the goal. Jet, as we head towards kind of the doldrums of summer traditionally, and maybe this year won't operate traditionally, maybe things will, will maybe things are a little bit out of sync, I'm not mm-hmm. sure. But, you know, one of the narratives that have been going on is that there might be a tsunami of freight coming from Asia. In Project 44's data, are you seeing that? Are you seeing that in the bookings? Is there a pressure valve about to explode? You know, that's a, we don't have the full picture of that data point. What I can tell you is, is that, uh, the West Coast is uh, there's not much delay at all happening on the West Coast. There's it's the opposite on the East Coast, specifically in Savannah, Charleston. Uh, we're seeing big delays over on the, that side. Of course, there's a negotiation happening uh, this this year with uh, the longshoremen out on the West Coast, and so you could see uh, companies out there trying to hedge and use other ports. They're also uh, uh, the West Coast has been backed up from COVID and Suez Canal and uh, all these disruptions that we've had. So uh, over that time period, we also saw freight move to other parts of, of, of the U.S. Um, what we're seeing, though, is a, an increase uh, in the import side, uh, also over in China. So uh, 
the congestion is different than what we've seen over the last 18 months, um, where China's uh, dwell time is high and then the East Coast dwell time is, is high. And the West Coast is, is pretty clean right now. That's really interesting as we go through the uh, summer that, that that has cleaned up like that. Let me ask you this, Jet. The, you know, we had all those changes, and you mentioned those the changes and the shift in uh, from port to different ports, especially West Coast to East Coast here in the United States. Is that sticky? Do you think that stickiness uh, lasts even through this as things kind of clear up a little bit on the West Coast if they stay that way? Yeah, you know, I'd have to look at do a little bit more homework on what's the infrastructure that's been just invested mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, on those on those ports and uh, really look and see what's the throughput of them and what what are the future dollars that are going to be be there at the end of the day I think uh, these companies they just have a goal they want they want to sell product and uh, they're trying to find the the most reliable way to get their product from wherever it's manufactured into their customers' hands so uh, if uh, there's continued investment in these East Coast ports um, then I think we will see that 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 continued uh, transfer of volume will continue to go over to the to the eastern ports, even if they're able to have a successful negotiation with the with the unions on the west coast. Um, that said, uh, we've seen this cycle before, and once the labor disputes are are wrapped up and uh, the west coast ports are uh, are back on track, uh, after to we kind of have short, short memories as humans and as logistics folks. It's less expensive in many cases to bring on the West Coast, and it's shorter transit time for a good uh, uh, part of the of the country. So uh, people, after a few years, tend to go back to the habits of, of shipping in the West. Mm. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. It's hard. It's hard to old habits die hard, and people go back to them really quickly. Yeah, that infrastructure's there too. Jet, know? this was great. You gave us some awesome takeaways. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. I hope you, the family, and Jet Junior are doing great, and uh, we'll connect with you soon. I look forward to reading more great news coming out of Project Forty Four. Uh, appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Big takeaways there. My big takeaways from what Jet just said was that shippers revenge, right? Yeah. Shippers are going to, and there's a reason. It's not just revenge. It's they have a lot of pressure on them from the consumer, from suppliers, from uh, from the C-suite up above yeah. to get costs at a certain level. A lot level. of costs. They got to get you them back You know what? Down. They always attack. They always attack transportation. That's, sure. where that's where they're coming for you. The other takeaway from what Jet said is not only are they making these decisions based on how low they can drive you, but how high your service level can be in visibility. That's going to be very important. And the winners and losers and who goes extinct during this summer isn't just going to be people who poorly manage how they move freight. It's going to be people who poorly manage how they adopt tech. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to have that visibility. You've got to fit into their initiatives. They've got to become more efficient. And if you're not playing that game, and you know why? Be because behind. of the rising cost of That's fleet right. ownership. Let's talk to David Kessler. He's the vice president of expedited fleet and operations over at ArcBest. And we'll talk a little bit about this topic. And he is the perfect man for it because uh, he's a Purdue University alum. And he did is. you know that among their alum, they count 18 gold medalists, 26 astronauts, 13 Nobel laureates, and David Kessler himself. David, thanks for coming on the show. David? Okay, well, David, well, they, well, they call <laughs> David go. back. How about we bring this gentleman who's in the green room, and it's actually in a white room. He looks absolutely wonderful. Some know him as the co-founder and CEO of Cloud Trucks. We know him as Tubena Orodiobu. Welcome <laughs> to the show today, sir. Hey, how's it going? How are you doing? And you are a little bit different than everyone. See, we were about to just talk about the rising cost of fleet ownership, yeah. but you own virtual trucks. Virtual assets are a little bit cheaper, aren't they? Uh, they are, depending on the way you look at it, I guess. Yeah. Well, you <laughs> yeah. were named, and I want to congratulate you, too. I want to give you a little cowbell here. You were named to CNBC's Disruptor 50 list this year, along with 49 other groundbreaking innovative companies. And it wasn't like you were number 49. I think there were eight. They were in the top 20, at least, right? They were 18. Number 18. Right on, man. From Good not stuff. on the list to 18. Yeah. Way to go, Well, why'd you get there? What is Cloud Trucks? What's the elevator pitch? Uh, well, we help owner operators manage their business, Every, everything from how they generate revenue to how they manage cash flow, how they lower their costs and how they stay compliant. So we, we started the company in 2019. So it's really great to be named to that list so early in our company life cycle. But I guess the CNBC team really recognized uh, some of the work that we've been able to do in a short period of time and some of the work that we are hoping to do going into the future as well. 
Awesome stuff, man. And what, so what kind of trends are you uh, seeing in the trucking industry today? And uh, really, how, how, how do you think we might uh, things might change? Yeah, so, you know, obviously right now there are a number of issues that uh, the entire trucking industry is facing. The owner-operator population where we really focus is facing as well. One of them is lower spot market rates. I think we've seen spot market rates drop about 20 to 30 percent since the start of the year. Uh, and then the, the other is the rising cost of, of fuel, right? So so those are like major challenges that folks are facing at the moment. And really, Cloud Trucks was built for this for this type of environment where we're trying to help our customers be a lot more efficient uh, in the way that they run their business and, and be- basically make better and better decisions. So I'm thinking that as, as we see the, the environment continue to change, we're going to see more adoption of technology by some of the smartest owner operators out there, some of the smartest carriers out there to just stay ahead and, and be able to, to kind of uh, thrive in this, in, in this environment. You know, but when you look at this environment and it's almost like, you know, if you're into crypto or Bitcoin, you see that going down rapidly, everyone panics. And you look at the spot market and you see that just going down and down and down, everyone panics. And what's funny is just a few months ago, we were having like 3PL to 3PL coming on, you know, bragging that they had bought assets and we bought trailers. We we bought all this stuff. And now the last three months, my inbox has been filled with people trying to offload trailers and uh, containers. It's a tough market. Now, you're building a company in this. How do you think about building for the future, knowing, not knowing exactly what that future may be? Well, first of all, look, the, the fact is people are still going to need to move freight, no matter the environment. People still need to order stuff. People still need to purchase stuff. So uh, like I said earlier, the, 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 the entire premise of Cloud Trucks was to help the small business owner perform a whole lot better. And that that value proposition matters a whole lot more in this environment than it does in an environment where everything's uh is is, is a little bit easier but by the way you should uh you should send me some of the names of the folks who are trying to offload trailers because we definitely need more trailers for uh for our owner operator population out here oh wow great so what are the trends that you're seeing going over through the summer there at cloud trucks what are you preparing for uh, we're preparing for more products uh, to help to help the drivers perform better. I think the, the the biggest things that matter right now to us are one: how do we build better and better products to help the owner operators generate more revenue, especially as the market changes. So helping people make decisions on you know where they should be going, what markets they should focus on, what their revenue uh, should be, and 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 really paying attention to that revenue per mile, cost per mile. So building a lot more products there. And then the second part of it is cash flow, right? In this environment with the high cost of fuel, high cost of maintenance, uh, it's really, really important for everyone to pay attention to their cash flow. So we're really focused on how we can uh, continue to improve the cash flow opportunities for drivers. We already have the CT Cash product where we pay drivers instantly on a card. We're building uh, an increasing number of products also to help them improve their cash flow uh, so, so that they, they perform a lot better in the market. Wow. Really? How do you do, so how do you, cause you're saying, you're saying smart things here. How do you do your, your research on this when you're deciding what products you need? Like, for example, we talked to some companies and they don't seem to understand that drivers need cash flow or they never even mentioned right. anything like that. And you did. So I want to ask who you've been not talking to. <laughs> well, we stay very close to our customers. I mean, they know their problems better than anyone. Uh, and one of the unique things about cloud trucks is that we are a carrier, right? So we face the exact same problems that every single one of our, our our customers are facing, and we see that data very clearly. We're very close to them. You know, I spend a lot of time talking to them myself. So we just learn from the problems that they're facing, and and one of the things I, I always say to people is uh, the thing I love about the truck driver population is that people are not shy to tell you exactly what their problems are if you just pay attention. So that's really how, how we decide on what to focus on is listening to customers. Wow. Listening to customers and getting their needs and then implementing them. Who'd Make, have thunk that was the key to success? Excellent stuff. Makes Abhi. sense. Excellent. Where do people go to connect with you, learn more if they like what they heard, but they just need a little bit more information? Where do I send them to? Yeah, if you want to know more about Cloud Trucks, you can go on cloudtrucks.com slash SFOO. Uh, so, so we have a website there. You can learn more about the products that we have um, and, and, and really connect with us from there. Hey, thank you so much. Excellent we appreciate stuff. your time today. Have a great Wednesday. All right. Thank you. Take care, Take guys. Easy.
Wow, it's hot. I wonder if it's hot where he is, as, uh, as it is here. I don't know if there's a cool place on the planet right now. I don't know if there is. <laughs> I think we have David Kessler back, Vice President, Expedited Fleet and Operations over at Echo to talk about that rising cost of fleet ownership. David, we got you back? Yes, sir. Can you hear me now? Yeah, no, you uh, sound absolutely. excellent. You sound super, super clear. In fact, we were praising your alumnus status at uh, Purdue before before we lost you because uh, you have a lot of 26 astronauts, 18 gold medalists, 13 Nobel laureates, and, of course, yourself. Now, today, though— yeah. <laughs> David, what, running a what truck. A down, though. What, I think it's not a letdown. They created a fourth category just for you, <laughs> the David Kessler category. <laughs> we need some transportation representation. That's I right. Mean, come on. And now you're going to help some drivers out. So fleet ownership's getting expensive. You know, every single person who went out and bought equipment over the last two years did it at inflated notes. It's getting tough. What are some ways that you can help drive down costs in an environment like this, David? Man, you know, that's, that's such a great question. Um, you know, and I, I love this event, and I was just listening to the last guest, a lot of great content. And it was actually, I was at the uh, in-person event in Fayetteville about a month ago, working the ArcFest uh, booth. And, uh, uh, Duner, I know I saw you walking by, you look like a movie star uh, walking by with your persona there. But uh, great event so far. This virtual event looks like it's going it's to be just as successful. And I love the past conversation about all these supply, global supply chain disruptions happening. And how that is really tied to the increasing costs our, you know, fleet owners, small and large and owner operators are facing today. You know, Jed even touched a little bit on uh, maybe the origin story here. Uh, when you look about the global supply chain disruption, starting, mm-hmm. of course, with COVID in 2020. And then, you know, you had fires in Japan, you had fires in Texas, you had Panama Canal issues, Suez Canal, you had port congestion with Jet, uh, you know, talked about. And then now the most recent you know, zero COVID policy out of Shanghai, which, uh, you know, to your guys' follow-up question, you know, what is that going to do to uh, supply chains here late July, early August? And, you know, the question may be out, you know, on that. But what really has been happening is that, the, you know, the fundamental process, process or thought process in the design of supply chains is really being challenged, right, guys? I mean, you think about yeah. JIT, you think about JIT, you think about lean, where, hey, minimal inventory because my supply chain is my inventory, but man, there's supply chain disruptions. Now I have no inventory. I'm not fulfilling orders. I'm losing sales. I'm redesigning my supply chain on the fly. That's causing disruption. That's increasing costs, you know, across the board. Right. And so carriers feel that disruption and that reorganization uh, in a practical way, but also in a, in a, in a cost way. You look at the, you know, diesel is a talk of the town right now, but you look at tractor, new tractor, new trailer availability, uh, you know, there's some challenges there as they struggle for parts uh, from their supply chain issues. You know, tractor and trailer costs themselves from a maintenance and repair perspective. You need to even think about when these pieces of equipment are out of service. You know, fleet owners will probably have more equipment out of service than before. And it's probably out of service longer, right? Because they're waiting on on parts and repairs and unpredictability and volumes. You know, we talked about that in a few of these interviews. Yeah, and, you know, rising insurance costs and driver retention issues. You know, there's uh, certainly a lot of uh, increasing costs impacting fleet owners today that need to be addressed. And, you know, the cool thing is, uh, you know, what ArcBest is able to do today is uh, help solve some of those shipper end problems to help, you know, keep the global supply chain moving. And in turn, we can also solve some of these problems, uh, you know, for the small fleet owners. Yeah. So, let, I mean, let's talk about that, David. You talk about all of the challenges that are out there, and there's too many really to list. There's a bunch more. If We, we could talk about this all day long. Sure. Let's talk about some of those leadership or, or uh, ideation, thought leadership tips, and how the smaller fleets can, can really face these challenges in this current, current market and, 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 uh, and, and be successful. Sure. Uh, you know, great question. You know, on the uh, I guess on the shipper side, uh, you think about ArcBest, and maybe to add some some background, uh, you know, ArcBest is a uh, you know some of these other companies may be uh, more familiar, but ArcBest is a four billion dollar fully integrated logistics company that leverages its full suite of shipping and logistics solutions to you know meet our customers' critical needs and keep this global supply chain running. And you know, when I talk about fully integrated, you, you, uh, you need to understand that you have this group of asset solutions. Right. You have this group of asset light solutions is kind of where I, you know, live every day at Panther. And you have this, and also our dedicated international product. And you also have this, uh, non-asset or brokerage set of solutions as a top 15 brokerage mm-hmm. carrier. And, you know, you're really seeing tremendous growth in our managed transportation, 
uh, team growing because we can leverage all of these options, not just asset, not just asset light, but brokerage too, and leveraging them all through our own innovative and agile technology to solve some of these uh, challenges facing facing shipper supply chain. Well, hold, hold on, just one second, then, David. Though, hold on one second. Though. I, sure. I like what you're, I like what you're saying about and, about your growth, but this is also the owner operator and fleet summit for. So, how about for the audience? How about the owner operator? How do they grow with yep. someone like Echo? You're looking at diesel prices right now. You're looking at equipment. You're yeah. looking at people getting out of the game. How do you grow in an environment like this? Yeah, you know, you're spot on. And what this is able to do for us, like I was just talking about, is it gives us. Uh, you know, more, you know, loads, more density to offer to our capacity partners. And, you know, to, to your follow up there, you know, if I'm a fleet owner today, you know, what are some top things I can really tackle? And, uh, you know, fuel economy comes up, we talked about increasing diesel prices. You know, hopefully a lot of people are offsetting this cost through, uh, you know, some fuel surcharge tables. But, uh, if not, you know, managing your empty or deadhead miles, more important than ever. Right, because you have higher exposure to higher costs when diesel is where it is. Reduce idling. You need to get your teams to use the APCs at night. You know, the ultimate solution, right, is have all miles paid, and you can actually get that through our dedicated solution. But so, from fuel economy, you want to look at maybe equipment utilization. I mentioned before that you probably have more equipment out of service than before, and so the equipment that you do have in service, you need to make sure it's, you know, the trailers are loaded with paying freight. That it's Tractors you have are pulling that pain freight, and the drivers are using their hours of service to progress those loads. And you know the more, and this sums up really the more uh, utilization you get at the fleet, uh, you know, the better you'll be able to be that you know combat some of those margin compression from these higher costs. But fundamentally, more volume is what you need. Is your fleet as a small fleet owner, independent contractor, you need more exposure to more loads. And that's really what we're trying to do to help small business owners by supporting shippers we're able to provide consistent loads to give more opportunities to these guys uh, to leverage their equipment. You know, if you're trying to get, you know, equipment in, sir, in networks, out of networks, reposition, trying to get your drivers home when they want to be, or whatever it may be, your best ability to do that is by having a broad, uh, you know, uh, wide reach of, you know, volume and loads out there. The more, the better. And, uh, you know, that's something we're able to bring to the table to help support our fleet owners, our owner operators, and all the independent contractors working with us. Yeah, so more the more the better, and hooking up with somebody who can provide all those those type of loads is, is very, very important. The top, uh, really, uh, tips for fleet management, though, and partnering with somebody who, who really has a, a grip on that is really, really important as well, no? Oh, no, absolutely. Um, especially in these challenging times, you know, it's, uh, you know, the, the relationships you have with your partners are more important than ever. Uh, you see a lot of people, you know, pivoting, you know, making quick ad hoc decisions in their supply chains and maybe even your partnerships. You've seen shippers, you know, increase the amount of bids, mini bids, monthly bids, weekly bids. You know, it's, it's the benefits come from having a collaborative partnership with a company that can provide you stability, access to loads, access to technology and that you can really depend upon and work with for years to come through multiple disruptive events, uh, you know, regardless of whether it's a recessionary economy, you know, booming economy, it doesn't matter. You need to kind of build for the long term. And that's what, you know, we're trying to do with our shippers and our capacity partners. Wow. Uh, so any tips or thoughts to uh, leave the listeners of this summit on before we let you go? What, what's your top tip of the day or your top takeaway you think people should take from this summit? Yeah, absolutely. When you think about, you know, you know managing your costs, you know, the, uh, you know, the exposure to higher costs and, you know, with the rates of diesel, you know, keeping your equipment utilized, maintaining your fuel economy, uh, maximizing your exposure to volume to, to loads is, is incredibly important. Then finding those right partnerships, uh, making sure you're aligned with companies that you can count on, uh, you can have the sustainable relationship and that you can trust. Uh, and you can really find that here at ArcBest. Wow. Well, David, where do people go to learn more? Sure. You know, uh, I'd love to send people to our website because it's a it's an awesome website at ARCP.com. Um, but I, I really would like, if anybody is interested, uh, you know, I love solving logistics challenges and problems. It, you can reach out to me directly. So ARCP.com or email me at dkessler at ARCP.com. I want to help anybody and everybody I can to solve some of these challenges we're all facing today. I like it. I mean, that's part of the, the, the hard part's part of the fun if you stick around in this industry long enough, right, David? Thank you so much for your time Man, today. Good. You got it. Sorry about the video. I'd love to talk to you guys in person again down the road.
Oh, that's good. I'm sure we'll see you. I'm sure we'll I'm see sure you out we there will, on the battlefield. David. David, thank you once again so much for your time. You got a dooner. Michael, have a good one. For those, too, uh, for those of you who are tuning in, too, if you haven't registered yet, if you haven't gone to live.freightwaves.com, I think you can win, like, a Yeti cooler. Yeah, right? the Yeti, Yeti Tundra cooler, right? Also, any sessions yeah. from this event, you miss them. They should all be up on demand. Usually uh, by tomorrow or, or the next day, we upload all these. Uh, you can listen to them on audio. Go to Freightcast. Uh, you get every single Freightways podcast all in one feed. It's an episode of What the Truck, of course. You just want that. Look up What the Truck wherever you get podcasts or go to freightwaves.com or backthetruckup.com. Backthetruckup.com is our new site driver face. We actually just launched a brand new podcast, Driver Run Podcast, Back the Truck Up, right over at backtruckup.com. You can find the first episode there talking to a driver who won a single exemption for himself. Now, stay around, Fireside Chat, getting in bids with larger shippers. It's Kevin Hill and it's Paul Estrada, and they're going to be talking about does it make sense to work with these larger right. shippers. We will be back Friday at noon Eastern time. Find us right here on Freight Waves TV. Find me on Twitter at Timothy Dooner. That's D O O N E R. Find him at Vincent the Dude. Don't be a stranger and tell him how to be. Peace and love, everyone. Spread it everywhere.